Today in the kitchen, we're gonna be making lobster and langostino. We're going to make that in a white wine cream sauce, and then we're going to wrap a thin, delicious French crepe around it. It's going to be delicious. Let's get started. All right, first, we're going to make a basic crepe batter. Now, crepes are uh, a French pancake, and they're very thin. Because we're going to be making ours first for a savory dish, we're gonna have ours just a teeny bit thicker than the normal, but still very thin compared to the American um, pancakes that we make. So I'm going to start out with, um, with, but, uh, with milk and uh, eggs. And what you want to make sure you do with the eggs is that you crack them on a flat surface rather than cracking them here on the side of something because you tend to push the shell inside and that's how you get shells in your eggs. All right, so there we are, one egg, perfect, and another egg. So let me get a towel here for my hands. So we're gonna pour in the milk. And unlike the American pancake batter, the crepe batter is very, very uh, liquid, which, is, which turns out and gives us a very, very good um, crepe batter. Very good, so now that we have our milk and our eggs mixed, we're gonna add in the flour. Now we're gonna add the flour in a little at a time. So this is um, probably about a cup and a half, and we're gonna add it in half cup increments. And that way we can watch to be sure that we don't have any lumps. That's why we're making it in the blender. You can whisk these ingredients together uh, but you want to make sure that you don't have any lumps. So this is a faster way. And then you can just pour your mix right into your pan. So we're going to put in a third of the flour mixture. And we're going to mix that up. Very good. And we'll add in another third. Now also with crepe batters, you can use, uh, some people use beer, some people use heavy cream, uh, some just use a regular milk, it's up to you. Some use a milk and water combination. This is really looking good. So we're gonna add in our last third of flour. There we are, and we're going to mix that up. Wonderful, wonderful. Now I'm going to add in just a pinch of salt. Just a little. And let's do that one more time. Now I'm gonna test the batter and make sure I don't have any lumps or anything. Wonderful, that is absolutely wonderful. Now I'll tell you this also, um, the, the crate batters, like I said, you could use a, a, a number of different things in the crate batter or as your liquid. And what I'm doing now is I'm scraping down just to be sure all the little bits of flour are incorporated. Now I'm going to add the melted butter and I'm going to add it slowly uh, to the mixer. There we have it. Easy peasy, right? And the 
mixture should be a very nice, let's make sure, silky smooth, oh, and it is. Look at this. Beautiful, that is exactly what you want. Now, not all crate batters have to rest, but this one that I've made, it does have to rest. So we are going to get this into the refrigerator um, so that it can sit in there for about, uh, about a half an hour for this mixture. Um, we'll do that. All right, and I have a, another batter that has been in the refrigerator for about an hour. And here we have it. Now, sometimes when it sits in the refrigerator, it can get a little thick. So you want to make sure you stir it up. And if you need to, isn't that just silky smooth? You can add, because it's a little bit thick. So we'll test it with our first crate. And if it's too thick, then we will add a little more milk or water. Now, you can also add sugar to your crepes if you are making a sweet crepe, but we are going to make a savory crepe. And also to this batter, I can add tarragon because I'm going to be using lobster. And tarragon is one of the French's uh, let's say, I'm going to call it a staple herb that they use. There are four that they typically like to use with, um, with different ingredients that they eat a lot, like eggs. So that's chives, parsley, uh, tarragon, and they use also thyme. So we're going to get our pan on. Let's make sure it's hot. Now, I can tell you this, because that pan is smaller and the amount of batter I put in there, of course, that's going to come out fine, but it's going to be thicker than what I was looking for. But again, it's my first one in that pan, so I'm excused. Uh, all right, but this is so exciting to try, so make sure you do at home, and then you can use them for anything. You can put um, Nutella and strawberries on them. You can put... Um, Whatever your favorite, you know, stuffing is, just go ahead, have a good time with it. We're going to do another crepe. I'm going to give this a second shot. Let's see how I do here. And again, be careful because if your pan gets too hot, it will start to cook before you actually have a chance to spread it around. So I'm going to try, let's switch hands and see if that helps because I'm right-handed. That's better. Woohoo! All right, so it doesn't matter about the little dots around the side. We can pick that up. But you want to wait um, until you start seeing these golden brown edges on the outside of the crepe. That's what we're looking for. So we're going to get quite a few crepes in different sizes done. We're going to use some for uh, the second part of the show. And the first part of the show, we are going to make uh, use the crepes for the lobster stuffing. All right, we're almost finished with all of the beautiful crepes. And I think, I'm pretty sure I've gotten it down now, how to pour that crepe batter in. There we are. And you just have to swivel and turn that pan so that it makes that circle for you. Now, here's something when you're turning the crepes. And you can use, especially in your nonstick pan, you don't want to use anything metal. But you can use your fingers and just turn the crepe over. Hey, that's a far cry better than my first crepe, remember? So don't be discouraged if your first crepe doesn't come out the way you want. It just takes time and practice. And here, just so you don't feel bad, remember my first crepe? <laughs> so we have come a long way in the show. Now, 
This is why you want to use non-stick, so you can just slide your crepe off. Now, if you're going to turn the crepe over, um, that's another thing. Um, uh, if you're going to fold it, because you're going to make something else, but I'm just going to use my hand, turn that one over. We're at the bottom of the batter, so it's going to look a little funny, but that's all right. And I don't have enough batter in this to make an entire big crepe. So we're going to go back to the beginning. Here we go. I'm shaking the pan to get all this batter that I do have in here around. But that was the end. And you can always cut your crepes into the circle that you actually intended it to be. All right. But don't toss them out. You can use them uh, to have with ice cream. You can use them for just about anything. Crepes are uh, used in France breakfast, lunch, or dinner. They are savory or sweet. You can eat them at any time. We are going to a quick commercial break, then we will be back and we will make our lobster cream sauce and our white wine sauce. And we'll be right back. Check out Simply Fresh Food with Chef Renee to learn new delicious recipes. Watch as I show you how to use fresh ingredients for healthy eating at every meal. Check your local listings for show times. Welcome back. We are just getting started on our lobster cream sauce. All right, first you wanna make sure that you got you a nice big lobster tail. I'm going to use two types. I have a lobster tail here and I have what is called langoustine or langostino in the stores and they're just thought of as, you know, the little lobsters. I would call them little lobsters as well. So we're gonna use a combination of both of them. And the important thing is that they are not wet, they're dry, all right? So I'm just gonna press this, make sure it's dry, and press these, all right? And for the lobster sauce, we're gonna add our butter in first. We are also going to add in our onions. And while those two do a little dance, we're going to put in our some of our ingredients for the uh, white wine cream sauce with Swiss cheese. So I have the pan on and I'm going to add in, let's see, let's add in first our onions. All right, let's check on this and then we'll add our fat or our butter to the sauce, to the white wine sauce. Those are coming along just beautifully. So now that we have the two pans going, I'm going to cut up the lobster. All right, I'm just gonna cut it down the middle. What we want is just, you know, so that we have some nice chunks or pieces to it. You know, you might even want to make it a little smaller so that they'll fit into our crepes. All right, so now that we have our lobster cut up, and I'm not going to worry about the langoustine or langostinos. I'm going to leave those there. We're going to use this, and we're going to slide in our, let's move that, lobster meat. So that's lobster meat, butter, and onions, and then we'll add in a few of these, a few of the langostinos. 
Now I'm not going to add so much because I don't want the temperature of my pan to come down. Just rinse my hand there. Get rid of that cutting board. And let's stir here. All right, so we have our onions and we have some butter in there. I'm just going to shake the pan there. Now to that, I'm going to add uh, flour. Now we're adding the flour because we are going to make our roux here. So I'm just going to whisk that. I'm not really looking for it to change colors. So we're going to add our other ingredients. We're going to add our vermouth. Going to add some salt. And then I'm going to stir, add the butter. This smells absolutely delicious. So this is um, um, heavy cream. So that's what I'm using, heavy cream. Let me keep stirring. Now it is going to thicken, which is what we want. But I'm going to turn the fire down. And then I have water on the side so that we can add to that if we needed it, if it gets too thick. Let's turn over the lobster. There we are. We got our seafood going very nicely. Smells delicious here. I see some nice huge chunks of the lobster. Now, I'm just turning everything over so we can make sure everything is properly cooked. That's important with seafood, that everything is properly cooked. We're going to add a little pepper and salt. A little more. And we're going to add a little bit. Not too much. There are some huge peppercorns in there. And let's stir back here. There we are. See, we do need a little water there. We don't want to take away too much from that taste. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sauce. And I like having the onions in there. Now, if you want, you can add garlic. You can add anything that you'd like. I'm turning down the heat on this. We don't want our lobster or seafood to be rubbery, so we are going to add first our vermouth. Kick that heat back up. Just let the, the um, flavors infuse, and then we are going to scoop out our seafood. By that time, our cream sauce will be ready. Let's move some of this out of the way so you can see. So we are looking really good back here. Now, we're going to add to that our cheese. Here, let's do a little bit extra cheese. I'm going to add in my heavy cream, or rather just a little bit of extra milk, because I see that I need it a little extra. There we are. Look at that. See that? Nice and creamy, cheesy. I'm going to turn off the burner. And this will thicken up on you uh, because you have both the, uh, the flour as well as the cheese in it. Look at that. Wonderful. And we're going to use that to add to our lobster. This smells really good. That's all we need here. I'm going to turn that off and we are going to scoop out our meat into a dish. There we are. This smells really, really, really good. So we have there and let's pour our sauce right into this container where the vermouth came from. And that way, if we need this sauce, we have it. And remember, the burner is off. So we want to make sure we got everything out. There we are. Now, to this, 
I'm going to take a little bit of that cream sauce. Let's see. We're going to get a little bit of it. Look at that. Going to add this, our, our seafood back into the pan. And we're going to add some of this sauce. I'm going to lift this. Let me move this out of the way for a little bit. I've got a lot going on over here, don't I? All right, we're going to add a little bit of sauce to it. What a cheesy mess. It's going to be delicious. All right, a little more. And let's see how that works. Look at that, absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That's just what we want. Not too much, but just enough. We're going to use that sauce when we make our plates to go under the broiler, uh, which will be the finishing touch for our stuffed crepes. Let's move a few things out of the way. And I have some extra cheese, and I'll show you why I kept the extra cheese. All right, let's get our plate that will go under the broiler. Let's see. We're going to use this one. I'm going to put it there, and we need one other thing. I'm going to get these into the refrigerator so we can use those, and they are fully cooked. Remember our crepes? Here we are. Now we've got different sizes of crepes on this plate. So I'm going to take some of the smaller ones, which is what I want to use for this plate. And take some of the smaller ones, because we had two pans, remember? I'll use the larger ones when I need that one. Hey, not too shady, right? Crepes came out nice. Look at there, they're so thin, I'm having to flip through them like you do money, new money. All right, here we go. We're going to take one of the crepes. Let's get closer. We're going to move over. And we're going to put some of the, we're going to put some of the lobster sauce in there. So we got enough on there. Let's sit our spoon down. And then we are going to roll that crepe with the lobster in it. And we're going to sit it right here. Who's going to join me for dinner? Yum. Now. The reason I put that one on the plate is because, as Julia Child says, there's a private side of the crepe and a public side. And there, I use my private side on the wrong side. So, we call it a show side. So, here is my show side there. Let me get everything out of the way so you can see that. Now, what we do from here is I'm gonna bring the plate up. And don't you worry, that crepe won't be there much longer. <laughs> so we're going to take some of the sauce. I'm gonna stir it to get it back to a different consistency. And remember, I added onions to this. And I think I'm going to add a little bit of that seafood sauce. That's the broth from the lobster. Let's stir that up. So fret not if your sauce thickens. You have something flavorful over there to loosen it up. So now you take some of the sauce. There we are. And you add that onto your crepes. 
Now, this is not something you're going to eat every day, right? So why not splurge, right? And when we finish with this, we are going to pop these into the, under the broiler, only for about two or so minutes, just to give the sauce and the cheese and everything to reunite with each other. They're gonna have a meet and greet, and then we'll eat. I made a rhyme. <laughs> All right, so we have that there. And here is that finishing touch. Going to add our cheese on top. You said more cheese? Yes. More cheese. And if that weren't enough, a little more. There we are. This is absolutely, I cannot wait to dig in. All right, there we go. We are going to a commercial break. We are going to pop this into the oven and we will be right back. Hi, I'm Chef Renee of Simply Fresh Food with Chef Renee. And people who know me know that I cook with the freshest ingredients. It's important to use fresh and organic ingredients whenever available. Not only does cooking with fresh ingredients create healthy eating habits, but it also means great tasting food. So join me in shopping locally when you can. Welcome back. Now it's time for the most important part to taste it. Yay! I have here some spinach that I just blanched with um, or sauteed with some uh, garlic. So I want to rest my lobster stuffed crepe right on top. So let's get one of these out. Now remember, these went under a broiler just for a little bit. We'll just take one to start with. Look at that, how beautiful that is. Here we go. So what do you think? Did you enjoy that? I tell you, lobster and langostino, you can't go wrong. If you make that dish, you're gonna be the hit of the party. I wanna thank you for inviting me into your home. I wanna also thank all of my sponsors and I will see you next time on Simply Fresh Food with Chef Renee. Simply Fresh Food with Chef Renee is sponsored by Red Tail Heart and Bull Rap Kitchen.